little bit on cavitation uh, we're going to do an exercise we already saw how to calculate the net specific positive head requirements and how to comp uh, to let's say how to compare it versus to the available and we have a thumb of, uh, rule of thumb here so let's do it a typical example on cavitation will be given a system which is fixed we have this point right here we have a loss of friction right here we have the loss of friction of this pipe section we have the final pressure here we have this height and we have this height as well so they tell you given a system that uses benzene at this temperature 37.8 celsius they are very kind to give us the pressure in the suction line which is interesting because normally they won't give it to you but anyways let's say this will be always the case we have this pressure right here pressure in the suction is constant and the net positive uh, specific head required for the operation of this pump is 3.05 meters the density of this fluid of benzene is 876 kilograms per cubic meter nice so they tell you calculate the vapor pressure of benzene and once you have that is the pump enough or will you expect cavitation so for this case in vapor pressure of benzene we will use the Antoine equation which is essentially the logarithm of the vapor pressure and you need to find the constant A you got B, the temperature at which we are operating and C so once you find A, B and C plug this temperature here and solve for the vapor pressure and I found out this value so you don't need to actually calculate it, you can go to a internet calculator of vapor pressures or to the databases and find this out. So once we have the vapor pressure, recall that we only need to calculate the <coughs> net positive specific head available and compare it versus the net specific head required. So let's do it. By definition, NPSH available is the pressure in the suction line which we do have, thank God, and the vapor pressure, which we already calculated. And because I want this in meters, because they give me the NPSH in meters, so I'm going to use the meter, I need to divide by density and gravity. Doing this, I got pressure of suction minus vapor pressure. Be sure to change everything to pascals. We are working right now with kilopascals, so we need to multiply this by 1000. Divided by the density, and the gravity and I got this value of 7.5 meters NPSH available. Uh, the criteria for cavitation is the rule so I got 7.5 is it bigger than 1.10 times the NPSH requirements yes I think it is I have 7.5 is it greater than 3.36 yes it's great so we will not have cavitation that's awesome so let's do the same exercise for water let's suppose we have the vapor pressure right here 6.3 kilopascals we got the density okay so let's go back and see if this pump is enough so the pressure in the suction line will be the same 86 the only thing that changes is the vapor pressure and the density of our fluid gravity is constant so I do this calculation then 1000 divided by this and I got this NPSH available I compared once again with the 10% of safety and I see that actually I got more 8.1 versus 3.36 from the last example was 7.5 so yes I am still able to work with this fluid and it makes sense guys because the vapor pressure is too low compared to this one right here which was 21 the lower you go you can see the lower you have this vapor pressure the more NPSH available you will have and that's always a good thing to have now what will happen if you have very volatile substance it is very low density and very low, high on vapor pressure which means will vaporize very easily uh, once again we only change vapor pressure and density 
The section line is still constant, so 86 minus 72 times 1000 of the kilopascal divided by gravity and its density, which is 750. I got 1.9 meters. So this time, guys, I am not able. 1.9 meters is less than 3.36 meters, so I will definitely expect cavitation. So if I wanted to work with this fluid, my pump will cavitate and will eventually be destroyed, the be destroying the impeller and damaging the impeller and many other stuff. So avoid using this. So what can you do in this case is either change the pump, so the NPSHR or requirement changes. For example, you can find one that is maybe only one meter instead of 3.05. So one times 1.1, you will have. Wait for it. You will have. If you were to change the pump, you will change the NPSH requirements, and you will have 1.1. And 1.9 is is greater than 1.1. So you will not expect cavitation. You can do that or change the density of the fluid, which means essentially changing the fluid because you cannot change the density of a fluid. You need to change the density of the substance. The only way to do it is to change in substances. So either you work with another substance or you work with another pump or the, the other thing you could do is to increase or decrease the system, but probably you have a fixed system. So whatever, uh, whatever option you choose to do, you are kind of limited. So, one last exercise. What is the minimum vapor pressure to operate benzene? So recall that for benzene, we got a vapor pressure of, we don't know it, that's what actually we want to know, the vapor pressure. But we got the density, yes. The gravity, yes. The suction line, yes, yeah, this is constant. And we know that the minimum that we need is to have is 3.5. 36, which rounding up is 3.4 meters. So this will be the minimum. So we just need to solve for vapor pressure. And solving for vapor pressure, I got that the minimum vapor pressure you need is 56.8. Anything below that, so for example, 50 will cavitate. If you use 20, oh sorry, anything above this, let's say 150, will cavitate. In the previous example, we were working with 21 kilopascals, so that was okay. If we were using 72, for example, it will carry it. So hopefully you get the idea on why it's very important to know the system. And it's time eventually to test yourself, because no one likes to go to the test without knowing if they actually know. Because one thing is reading and other thing is actually knowing. So let's do piece number two. Now let's check out the pipe and pipe lines. And you can see we've been taking these questions. It's ninth question. I recommend you score of eight out of nine questions and you should be taking around 10 minutes. So you will get material. This time I'm not going to answer them correctly, but you got all the options, question and answer. And once you set everything, you're going to get your grade. So submit your answers and you will get either is it correct wrong whatever actually yeah that that will be a pretty normal statistics when you just guess randomly we need to know how to how can we change maybe we can pressurize these to increase the head or maybe we can change of piping to decrease uh, friction loss uh, we can change the pump or we can change the fluid of operation which will not make sense probably if you want to move a specific fluid you will probably change the pump, not the fluid per se. But anyways, hopefully you got the idea of cavitation. I got many more problems waiting for you guys. Go to the chemicalengineeringguide.com, to my courses, go to the momentum transfer operation section, and you will find the applied fluid dynamics. Go to part number one, which is incompressible flow, and you will find quizzes, this slideshow, and many others, and many other solved problems. And that was everything for these exercises and cavitation. Let's continue with how to calculate the power requirements of a pump. This was a free preview. If you want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get 
all axes. Not only that, you get a very straightforward, uh, user-friendly interface. So, for instance, you were analyzing or studying pumps, you have it here, the pump block, and then you have the sections. If you were, for example, studying the types of pumps, you can go here, and you have all the classes right here. Not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these. So for instance, if you were studying positive displacement pumps, the video is right here. If you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here. Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.